you don't feel like crying, uh, laughing at sort of four or five in the morning. But when you go into some of these rooms and you hear them all going up, you know, yes. makes me die. Some of the disgusting little antics they get up to. It's just unbelievable. Mooning each other, whatever else. You know, about that, you know the Atlantic line we were talking about. Some of the stuff that goes on over there. Because you get the two two cars past each other, all the Denmark Hill, didn't you? Uh, the stuff that was going on there was unbelievable. <laughs> You know, in some ways, Southern's got a bad reputation amongst other regions because nobody really seems to be cracking about. Oh, no, yeah. they're not. They're just yeah. getting on with their job yeah. and coping in the only way you can possibly. Well, I started care. off at um, King's Cross, and it was all sort of quite regimental, and you know, one wall, uniform, and everything else. And we used to have to relieve uh, Southern men. Uh, oh, Finsbury Park, I think. Where was it? Yeah, it was Finsbury Park. I think they were Norwood men. And we had to relieve our things as well. Um, you know, the, the common thing over here was like some of them were cowboys because like at King's Cross the driver would be sitting there and the guard would come up and tell him how many sort of wagons he's got and what the tonnage is and what the speeds are of the wagons, etc. etc. And then they'd all trot off. When we used to relieve these summer men, there's uh, some scrubbing and bastard in a donkey go coat and sort of, you know, a big manky beard and sort of pull it you know, and jump out and the driver would say, how many you got on mate? He's fucked it, I don't know. But what's the weight? Well, you wouldn't want it on your feet, you know what I mean? And that's all you'd get, you know, and these, but my regular mate would say, cowboys, you know, these summer bastards and all that. Like. But since I've come over here, I've, I've seen why, I mean, yeah. as you say, it's at King's Cross, either going north or south. Literally uh, on the track, going yeah. vertically on that northeast coast. But it's down here, I mean, they're coming out of the woodwork. I mean, they're going around in circles, up, down, around. That's right. It's, it's amazing, really, the, the traffic over here. I see it. The amount of people they move as well over here. And the other thing I noticed when I first came over here was the, the commuter over there on the east, and the commuter was much sort of politer, really. I mean, they thank you and everything else. Over here, they want to sort of Oh, drag you out by the balls and shoot you. <laughs> they're, they're terrible, yeah. they really are. You know, I've never known such a thing. He's probably loaded the pram and left down behind me. Mm. Ah, he's alright. There's nothing wrong with this chat, but a good woman wouldn't cure. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, they don't call them anymore, because they're all of 
Passengers, do you? No, I don't know. 
Eastbourne comes under Brighton's jurisdiction as well now, is it? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I should imagine it would do. Yeah. Because it goes sort of west for quite a while. Yeah. Um, so it must go east for quite a while. So you're on express and the stopper comes across in front of you. That's exactly what happened when that bloke went down the bank. Yeah. There's no margin for error. There's, there's none. Um, the old days, they used to keep sort of one section clear. That's right. You know, that's which right. everyone totally agrees with. It was a good play. This time, because of like speed, money again, sort of, you know. Go right up each other's arse, you've got to yeah. face each other cab to cab and then turn off at the last minute, you know. It. It's a bloody joke. And I mean, their, their argument is, well, you stop at a red light. Well, say I don't. Say I was asleep. I'm, I'm a human being, aren't I, you know? Yeah. Red lights still get chucked past, don't they? I mean, we'd have just gone sort of straight through that, didn't we? Oh, I mean, that's disgusting, really. We were some sort of failure, like a great failure. Thirties, you know, the first month oh. that stock came out, semaphores and everything on it. <laughs> a few frames missing, you know. But yeah. It's more like old than it appeared to be. Did you ever see um, Holloway? Holloway? Uh, was it Holloway or Herringer? Herring? Uh, no, Holloway. It was Holloway? Outside King's Cross, with the semaphores there. It's just a oh, huge gantry yeah. straight across. Um, the northern blokes who weren't too sure we used to come down here and always stop dead because it was just like a sea. It was a mess. Certainly something else. 
Yeah, I never got to see King's Cross till too late, really. Ah. Well, you see Phil from it even 10 years ago, it's, like, it's changed place, quite a lot, you know, yeah. Traction and well, all that sort of overhead, uh, well, my just probably getting on 10 years now. Yeah, yeah it must right. be. Yeah. It was, it was, there, it was, they was putting it up when I was there still. So it was 78. Yeah, it's probably in about 78, I should think. So it's been about 11 years. One of the games on it yesterday, but I was going back to this stuff. Wait, connection at York, and the three trains to London, uh, they're all packed up, but it's the single line work at Berwick, apparently, and some unit of packs at Darlington. So the next three London trains, when they came in the space of like 15 minutes to York, it was like trains from like spread over three hours. Single line working at Berwick and a unit flying. That's a lovely place, Berwick, isn't it? That's sort of the line there. I never sort of went on a train to there, but I used to stay up there quite a lot, Berwick, uh, sort of sea air was all on there. Lovely. Um, it's weird that it's operating 91s, yeah, these new units, with half an HST. Doesn't seem to be much better than the two HSDs. With all the new stuff they've got on the used in the nineties, they take a lot. Look at that side walls then. Great problems. Great problems, yeah. There's some heels that don't have like signal problems, don't they? Yeah. Not unless the sort of media you find out about it, then they have to come clean with it a bit. scrambled up the platform at Clapham Junction, moaning sort of British railways and then, and then she realised that they dragged themselves out of the wreck and sort of walked away and sort of was going to be late for the office, you know. Didn't think about stopping to help or yeah. thanking the lucky stars that they were still alive or, you know. They must be sort of, I don't know, they must be brain dead until they get back to sort of home or the office and then become a human, human being again. <laughs> Two minutes on it. Try to back out a bit, but the uh, back is 
said, well, you left to play anyway, whether you're ever done or not. We've got it. That's it. And I think the old sort of layout was much better because they seem to have taken out a lot more track and sort of cut the options down a bit. That's true. Well, I've never been a great fan of this bi-directional work. No, that's just... Save on track, will it? It's just getting twice as many trains on it, isn't it? It's it. It does save on track. I mean, it's fast, isn't it, really? Let's say you've only got one track, or I mean, on the single stuff, it's sort of two way track, or reversible. Uh, they say, oh, it's not. You don't have to maintain, you only have to make one track. I mean, you've got two lots of trains going over, you've got sort of, you're, you're wearing it out twice as far. Right. You can't run trains on the other track once you maintain it. Yeah. Ticking over, really, isn't it? Well, it does. I mean, a lot of times, blokes are sort of running labour somewhere or other. And, uh, if you don't get a drop off, it's to put the service on labour. Yeah.
sort of go from the countryside where the signals may be two, three, four miles apart in a couple of places down the track. You just come lead up to London here. And if you're sort of not quite concentrating on it, I'll just make you know, you get two yellows and you think that'll have plenty of time. Before you know it's one yellow and red. Bosh. Yeah. yeah. See what I mean? Like, I'm sure another contributing factor is like that. That everybody's fed up. There's a love hate relationship with drivers with trains, really. Oh, yeah. You know, and if your morale's low, you're going to, your concentration's not going to be as great or, or whatever. I think one of the biggest morale problems on the railway with everybody is, I know everybody's talking about money, but you know, it's money, 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 he has left secretary. And he was a dustman for Hackney Borough Council at £5.84 an hour. And I, I at the time, as a train driver, was getting about £3.25 an hour, something like that. Mm. I remember. So he was nearly sort of paying double my wages, you know. Yeah. 35 hour a week as opposed to 30. So nowadays, I think we've got a situation where we, we're still quite low. We're, back, we're up to about 450 an hour. step out the side of their milk floats. Well, I was sort of creeping around him, but he stepped out and I knocked him over. Just smashed his milk crate that he was carrying. He wasn't injured, but he was shaken up. So I was a bit late anyway. When they asked me for my report about lateness on duty, I told them exactly what happened. And a bloke called Harris spoke back. I've, still, I've kept his number ever since. This was back in the 70s, this was. Mm. Early 70s. He sent a letter back saying, uh, we note your reply about lateness on duty. Please make take steps to make sure such an occurrence doesn't happen again. Otherwise you'll be uh, severely dealt with under the disciplinary machinery, blah, blah, blah. And I was pissed off about that, so I went into his office and made another train lane. <laughs> and asked 
him what, you know, what it was all about. He said, oh, don't get upset about that. And, uh, he said, it's just, that's a standard railway reply. I said, so there's no sort of feeling or, you know, sort of, oh, well, this bloke's had a bit of a sort of a job getting to work that morning or, you know, no sort of compassion or anything like that. It's just like whack him with a big stick and send him back, you know. Was, now I realise what the manicure was all about. Like, no, I thought, that's right. Yeah. 